Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. That happens every <laughs> once in a while. And I think that's just the perfect way to start the show when Kyle's back in the office after three days. It just threw me off. I'm not used to seeing you there. <laughs> it's Friday, April 12th. Today we're talking about CarMax recalibration. Ford starting to ship Rangers and nine-figure dudes. I want to be a nine-figure dude. I'll take a nine-figure dude. I want to be a nine-figure dude. <laughs> Actually, being a nine-figure dude in the way we're going to talk about at the end of the show, in my opinion, may be the best job in the world. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. We'll talk about it. Like, it's just, I mean, I it's love the auto industry. It's not I love the fair. auto industry so much, but I think you'd be few and far between not to, like, perhaps trade for a month. We try, look, look, we're trying to get a little bit out of that. Well, I know. Life. We're trying to harness right. our inner nine-figure dude. <laughs> and uh inner nine figure maybe, dude maybe like one day that. if you count the decimal that's the points. new name of our company inner <laughs> nine, figure dude. nine figure dudes yeah <laughs> uh welcome back to the office how does it feel to like wake up and be in your studio well th- look it's not even just about waking up as you as you know it it uh it it is about sleeping in your bed right that is the that is the real thing but there's a certain zen about just being in your environment, knowing where you're sitting, knowing the mic's going to oh, work. So you nice. Know, it's, so it's nice. Our producer, Nathan, <laughs> but, just gave us a show note said, it sounds like we were saying nine finger dudes, like I only have nine fingers, but we we're saying figure, F-I-G-U-R-E, as in money, as in money. cash. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think it'd be cool to be a nine finger dude. That, that would, would probably be, be a little bit be, challenging. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, it's good that you're home. You just got the, I was so jealous because you, every time I like looked on LinkedIn and saw the Kane families and friends, I was like, look, Kyle's there you got to go last year. Right I got to go this year. I, I didn't get to go last year. That, know. The, it, you know, special. So, uh, Paul Folletti, he's the CEO of NCM. And he came up to me and he said, what about this event makes it special? And I said, it's, it's actually that, when you come to this event, everybody assumes the posture of David, right? So like this absolutely very humble, smiley, uh, like a caring posture, even if you maybe don't see that posture from some of these people that you see in the industry Normally. all the time at other events, yeah. they assume that posture for the event. And it is, gosh, it, that's so true. It's Dude, wild. that's true of any, any event. You think of like a yep. wedding, even you go to a wedding, and if the bride and groom are reserved and sitting down, the whole wedding's reserved yep. and sitting down. But even though some people floor, are like, even though the, some people are like, can done. we just dance? Right. Like yep. if the bride and groom are out there doing it, even people that wouldn't usually be out there dancing on the floor are out there on the floor. That's a it great It made insight. me think. I was like, what is the what is the posture that people are assuming when they come to a SodaCon? Uh, I mean, important. the shoe, the shoe fits. If you were at a SodaCon last year or the year before, you understand our general posture and the posture of the whole Soto team is happy, welcoming, uh, open-handed, right? I'm not trying to like give us all these compliments, but these are the things that we aspire to. And yeah. uh, I think a SodaCon reflects that. So yeah. if you want to, uh, I mean, you can't go to Kane Families and Friends, you missed that one, but that you didn't miss shit. a SodaCon, right? Coming That's up coming. in just 32 days from now, May 15th and 16th and a little on 17th, little on the 14th, it's kind of sandwich it in there. Um, we have an insane lineup. We're selling a lot of dealer tickets now because you know why? Because we're close to 30 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a 30 day cycle thing. Any, anybody, you know? right, the next month doesn't <laughs> exist. The only thing that exists is this 30 day cycle. And so I was funny. What we sold one dealer ticket last night. Uh, you know, I, I wake up in the morning and we have all you know alerts set up, and I, and it was a, a fixed ops director for a, a, a corporate group, a corporate fixed ops director, bought that ticket at 3:23 a.m. Come on now, that that Getting that person excited. be working. And what was on their mind at 3:23 a.m. A SodaCon. A SodaCon. <laughs> it made me so happy. So uh, we hope that you will check out a SodaCon.com. Uh, our presenting sponsor um, is Reynolds & Reynolds Goo Goo Collab, co-presenting sponsor. Um, they have just done a great job helping us make this whole event possible. Nothing but love for them. Hope you get to meet some of their great people at the event. They surely will be there along yes. with a number of other great industry partners. You go to the site and see some of them. See the 60 plus speakers and dealers who are going to be there. Maryland Auto Dealer Association having their meeting. Wokan is having their sort of special breakfast meetup. I'm bringing oh, my personal that. therapist for a parenting session one morning. Whoa. I mean, it's, it's the whole thing. You can go home, run a better store, make more money, be a better parent, have all the smile. And let's, we. I mean, it's not the reason people come, but 
dude, we give out really great swag. At oh, Ahsoka. that's that is facts. I we mean, really great about. swag. We'll, we'll talk about all the swag. Yeah, yeah. All right, we really got to tell really some fun. stories because we're going to jump into David Long's Paul. All Things Used Card Room here. We're talking about CarMax today. So they're facing significant headwinds among high interest rates and fewer cars purchased directly from consumers. Uh, they reported a marginal increase in year-over-year -year sales uh, for Q4. Well, they're Q4, uh, but it underperformed analyst expectations. Net income, though, for the quarter fell 27% when analysts were expecting a 13% drop. So, a, or no, we're expecting an 8.4% increase. Major Whoa. difference. Their shares were down 13% on the news. Uh, they're still about 10% down as of right now. Um, saying high interest rates, deterring buyers back to affordability, shortage of used cars. Now that new cars are coming back in, in full availability, they don't see that uh, shifting until 2025 maybe. Um, they did originally have a plan to hit 2 million cars by 2026, and now they've punted that sucker all the way out to 2030 or beyond. Whoa. Yep, a CarMax, CarMax executive said affordability will be the key driver of our future success. This is where I see like Brian Kramer over in a corner, like, <laughs> like <laughs> I told he's like, you so. and now the dealers are buying the cars from customers, right? Yes. Like he's all yeah. excited about that. Oh I think gosh, there's a reality point. probably to that in some particular markets where dealers have looked at the model and said, hey, I'm going to go after that. And so they're buying more of these used cars off the street because they oh, yeah. haven't because CarMax hasn't bought that many as many cars directly from customers, um, you know, uh, we we all know i, I it kind of surprises me that that analysts were saying that they were going to see an 8.4 percent increase uh in in net income because everybody knew margin compression was coming and that was going to serve its way all the way to the used cars um, that's interesting I, yeah I, right how, I, I how can't does that imagine not being a, a solely used car dealer right now and not having a plan for profitability that's different than it was the last two years well speaking of a plan for profitability so segue time so Ford has announced it will finally be shipping 144,000 redesigned F-150 and Ranger pickup trucks to North American dealers following a quality assurance delay. We remember they stopped shipments of these vehicles. Yep. Um, they're resuming the F-150 Lightnings. Um, and on the Lightnings, they're issuing some price cuts of almost $6,000 in some cases. This is really roll back in, rolling back some price increases that happened. Yep. Um, the stop was initially initiated uh, due to past warranty costs and they're being very cautious that they don't walk themselves into another situation and we're talking like 4.8 billion in 2023 so they Ooh. said they detected some electrical issues they stopped shipments they fixed the issues avoided the warranty thing so a little patience might just pay off in the profitability line um so they want to meet their 2024 pre-tax profit goal of 10 to 12 billion and uh, ford engineers emphasized our proactive quality checks ensure only the best for our customers. Can a guy say OEMs need wholesales? Can a guy say that? <laughs> you do. know what I mean? They do. Uh, yeah, they, they absolutely do. It's going to be interesting what 144,000 trucks over a very short timeline pushed into the market actually does to the market. Um, you know, hey. Well, the Rangers too. Like the Rangers is not, like not a super... Um, right. it's it's a strong segment i think like coming back the the mid-sized truck small to mid-sized truck segment so i wonder what that's going to take sales from you have to i mean probably a little from full-size trucks for the people who don't need all the juice and then probably some people who are in that like mid-sized suv that are like you know what yeah and maybe pick up that there's a nice. few other pickup trucks in that range you know i know and, you get the nissan um what is that I, the, uh, the frontier time. yep yep and tacoma sorry tacoma yeah so Ford, good job, Ford. I don't yeah. know. Send Just a, good job, Ford. It sounds like there. a good thing. Speaking of good job. Segway. This made me happy and sad at the we same time. Snaps and claps for this one. Uh, so the $100 million trick shot now uh, that Dude Perfect has put up there, they are a YouTube sensation uh, that has expanded and grown since their very first trick shot in 2009, uh, has secured a $100 million uh, or at, at least a hundred million dollar investment into uh, the expansion of their empire, uh, a now uh, growing empire, both on YouTube and they're going to push into other media properties. Part of the investment is meant to go toward their massive new facility so that cool. uh, has like a three story trick shot thing, a, a full on mini golf course, 
Um, so real, I, one day we're going there, Paul. Um, absolutely. So other initiatives that they're working on is an international tour, a new streaming app. Uh, they've got the, their 30 for 30 ESPN documentary premiering on April 25th. Um, really yeah, cool the Dallas here. film festival. They're going to produce, yeah. they oh. just rule. They're running the world right now. Yeah, so they're known for their faith-based mission and philanthropic efforts. Uh, their focus is to serve families with the most trusted entertainment on earth. Um, Dude, Pe Dude Perfect member Cody Cotton said, this partnership will help us transform digital experiences into tangible ones for families. I love, I love it. They call that. the most trusted entertainment on earth. I don't know who doesn't love watching a great trick shot. And, the, oh. and, they're, just, and they're just good guys. Right. If yeah. you watch the content, I mean, sometimes they yell a little bit too much for me, like and get a little grading. Right. My kids love it. It's constantly like when a new video drops, my kids are on. They've just been good guys that have made it from the beginning. They've become very savvy business people, which we're seeing from a lot of YouTube creators. I yeah. also think we're seeing some of this in the automotive space um, as some YouTube and social media creators are now finding ways to monetize um, their content they make for salespeople, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know it's hard not to 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 love these guys we'll meet them one day we'll show them our our lame trick shot compared to their trick shots and we'll, we'll keep you know i have i've had one trick shot in mind that i really want to try to execute once because i worked in service i worked with wheels and having a car on a rack and then bouncing the wheel off the ground and having it land on the car like land right on the lug nuts now that would be ridiculous that's a hard trick shot but i mean they've done some hard trick shots just why so, not i mean if you got the time we i got don't the cars i know. don't but maybe maybe one day i will and that's what we'll do we'll do automotive related trick shots hey whatever you're doing today on friday we hope you really lean into what you're doing your job your vocation your mission your purpose serve some people sell some cars go buy tickets to a soda <laughs>